This is how I've been for the past few months. I've been in a serious slump. So much has been happening and I felt completely stuck, unsure how to pull myself out. It's that feeling of having no energy to do anything, yet knowing deep down that something has to change. So I decided to take one step at a time. I started by cleaning my studio space. It may seem like a small task, but the state of our surrounding, whether messy or tidy, can have an impact on our mindset. Even though I didn't feel like doing it, I pushed myself to finish cleaning. It made me feel just a little bit better, maybe 2%, but at least in that moment it was something. It is easy now to see you With your hand out on the wind I keep this folded at the corner So that I could not forget Folded So after tidying up, I thought, okay, maybe now I can sit and start with a sketch. I opened my sketchbook, but nothing my mind was completely blank and to the point i became very frustrated and i closed my sketchbook and that's when i slipped right back into the same slump this cycle went on for another two weeks like being trapped in a cocoon i just couldn't break free from it's not that i don't have any work to do i literally have plenty of things piled up waiting for my attention but there's this overwhelming physical and mental exhaustion that I just can't seem to shake off. this beautiful peaceful spot where I could sit and read a book I'd been waiting to start. It was a collection of letters written by Seneca to his friend Lucilius. In one of these letters Seneca wrote, set yourself free for your own sake, gather and save your time, which till lately has been forced from you. Make yourself believe the truth of my words, that certain moments are torn from us. Nothing Lucilius is ours except time. struck me deeply. Time is the one thing that we are interested with by nature. The only thing truly ours, yet so fleeting and easily taken away. Life is divided into three periods, what has been, what is and what will be. Of these, the past is certain and it's beyond fortune's control. But men who are engrossed lose even this certainty for they have no time to reflect and when they do, it is often with regret. These reflections resonated with me as I found myself caught unable to move forward because I couldn't let go of what had been. I was also reminded that other people's actions are beyond my control. Worrying about why someone does this or that only clouds my mind. The responsibility lies with them and not me. Later, I read another of Seneca's letter 
Letter number 28 to Lucilius, where he say, You can go to any corner of the earth and still feel the same. He explained that when things go wrong in life, seeking to escape to travel is less relevant. True change comes not from a change of place, but a change of mind. This made me wonder, is Seneca saying that travel is useless? Of course not. But his words made me reflect on how, at times, a change of scenery only mirrors our inner turmoil. Nature in its silence can reflect back our emotions, failing to shake off that gloom if our troubles remain unresolved. If we resolve our inner struggles, even the most forbidding landscapes can seem beautiful. But when those troubles persist, no matter how peaceful the surroundings, they won't ease the heaviness in our hearts and minds. And I read this another letter, letter number 78, I believe. Um, Seneca writes, A man is as wretched as he has convinced himself he is. In this simple line, he unveils the hidden alchemy of the mind, where despair is born not from the world but from the shadows we cast upon it. To believe oneself wretched is to craft a cage from whispers and sighs, where every glimmer of light is dimmed by the weight of sorrow. The sky feels heavier, the days grow long, and the smallest of burden turns into mountains. Not because the world is cruel, but because we have painted it so with a brush dipped in our own grief. Seneca knew well that suffering, more often than not, lies not in the events we face, but in the way we let them settle in our hearts. Seneca's wisdom reminds us that the world is but a reflection of our inner landscape. The mind, a delicate mirror, reflects what we choose to show it. When we embrace misery, it takes root and grows like vines, creeping into every thought, every action, until it becomes the very air we breathe. Yet even in this, there is a silver of hope, for just as the mind can bind us in sorrow, it can just as easily set us free.